Hello ladies and gentlemen, this again is Dr. Robinson and we are going to continue our studies and we're talking about transformation notation this time for reflections. Reflection flips a figure across a line. The line is called the line of reflection. Note, a figure can be reflected across a vertical line x equal k, some constant, y-axis as well, x equal to 0, or a horizontal line where y equals some constant k, the x-axis, x equals 0. For each vertex point xy reflected across the x-axis, its image, the point, is x negative y. So notice the x stays the same, but the y is opposite when you reflect against the x-axis. So it's from top to bottom. The vertex point xy is reflected across the y-axis. The image of the point is now negative xy. That's going to the opposite side, left to right. So x to negative x, the y stay the same. So let's look at this first question. Which axis is the reflection over? So we have figure one here, this angle. And let's look at a point like this point here, negative 1, 4. And let's look at this point here, which is right in front of it, looking like 1, 4. So the x's have changed sides, but the y values have say, stayed the same. So that's a reflection in the y axis. So our answer would be B, reflection of the y axis. And in case you don't see it, let me get a line tool. It's like having the mirror on the y axis because these two are staring right at each other, just the opposite sides of the mirror. So that is a reflection of the y-axis. Okay, let's try one for you. Which axis is a reflection over? X-axis or y-axis? Now this time I noticed they're upside down, it looks like. And this point is this point, so I think you can guess which one that is. So. I'm not going to tell you until class time. Check your understanding, see if you understand it so far. Check your notes. Remember, uh, write down your questions. I'll be glad to answer them in class. All right, we have the image of point Q is 5, negative 4, is reflected across a line. Which is the line? Well, here's point Q, and it is 5, 2. And it said the image of point Q, which is the other one, other Q, is going to be 5, negative 4. And 5, negative 4 is way down here. So let's see that. So here's 5, 2 and 5, 4, negative 4. So we want to see which line is it reflected over. Well, let's get our line tool again and look at the x-axis because it seems like the mirror is against the x-axis. So let's get a line tool. So it's like the mirror is laying down here. So I'm noticing that it's not exactly even though the number of boxes from here to the x-axis there's two boxes and from 0.5 negative 4 it's four boxes. So I'm looking at my choices and I better go down a little bit so I can even up the number of boxes that the distance point Q is from the line because it's got to be a mirror image. It's got to be the same distance from here to the line as well as from the bottom to the line. So there are three boxes up and three boxes uh, down from the line. So this line is where x, I'm sorry, y is equal to negative 1 all of the time. So notice wherever you go, y will always be negative 1 even though the value of x is changing. 
So I'm going to go with C as my answer, and let's see, C is correct. So that's going to be our line of reflection. So remember, the line of reflection can be a value other than the axis itself. So sometimes you may have a line other than the x-axis, like x equal to 2 if, if or negative 2 or something, or y in this case equal to negative 1. So it can be other than the axis itself. So that was a good question. Draw a reflection of x equal 1 of triangle ABC. So here's triangle ABC, and we want to draw a reflection of x equal to 1. So we need to draw, get our line tool again, and this time we're going to x equal to 1. Well, x equals 1 right here, 1, 0, and here's 1, negative 1, x equals negative 1, negative 2. So we're looking to draw some type of line of reflection against that line there. So let's get my cursor back and pull that down. So we want to have a reflection like it's folding from this side, which is that many boxes away from that, side, that line. So it'd be one, two boxes. So there, and it'd be how many from here? one, two, three boxes from this line. So we can copy this diagram. Let's clone it and put it one, two boxes away from the line. And that would be our reflection against that line. So remember, it's got to be the same distance from the line. One, two, two boxes away one, two, two boxes away. So it's reflecting against that line. And again, I say, notice it does not have to reflect against the uh, y-axis. It can reflect against a number like one, x equal to one. So this is where the reflection, a line of reflection or the fold would be. So that was another good question. So check your understanding, see if you understand it. If you don't, watch the video again or write down your questions. I'll be glad to answer them. So next, we got a question. Two gentlemen are talking about uh, point 0.4, negative 3, reflect the point uh, 0.4, negative 3 across the y-axis. Lewis thinks the image is negative 3, 4. Dan thinks the image of the point is negative 4, negative 3. So it's correct. You decide. Good question. Next time we're going to talk about what is the coordinate of point P prime. Here's point P up here, and we want point P prime. And this time we're reflecting against a diagonal line where Y is equal to X. Well, I'll tell you a little secret. If you count the number of spaces that goes from point P to this line, so count it across. Let's count one two, three, four, five, six, six spaces away from that, the land on that line. Now just count down six spaces away from that line. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you end up at four and negative two. Let me write, write that down there. Four negative two, and that's is where point P prime will be. So that's how you would do it. Here's a nice shortcut to to tell you which way it would be. Just reverse the coordinates. Four negative two, because you had four negative two four, and since y is equal to x. When you're doing a reflection against the y equal x, that would give you reversing the coordinates would be the key. So we're going to talk about that in class. So that's a nice discussion we'll have. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson and got something out of it. So see you in class because the next time we'll talk about 
transformations for rotations. So this is Dr. Robinson signing off. I'll see you in class. Remember, bring your questions, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.